Hello again, everybody. In this video, another viewer question is answered. Here, we're going to analyze particle dynamics with derivatives, which sounds a lot more impressive than the actual math I'm going to do. Uh, so we have some particle moving along the x-axis. And at any time t here, we're given a position function. So that's going to be pretty darn helpful for us. And the first question is uh, to find the velocity and the acceleration functions. Of course, this is very straightforward. Uh, the velocity function, v of t, is the derivative with respect to t of the position function. So in this case, the derivative is going to be, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9t squared, minus 2 times 21 is 42t, uh, plus derivative of 30t is 30. All right, so there we found the velocity function. Uh, the acceleration function is going to be the derivative of the velocity function. So a of t is going to be v prime of t. All right, the derivative v prime of uh, v of t is, let's see, 2 times 9 is 18t. Uh, derivative of 42t is going to be minus 42. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So now we found the acceleration function. OK, uh, next question, when is the particle at rest? Well, we know the particle is at rest. That means it's not moving. If it's not moving, then the velocity is zero. Okay, so this occurs when the velocity, here we'll put that back into blue. This occurs when the velocity is equal to zero. In fact, let me move the zero to the beginning because then we can keep going with this. We know the velocity is given by nine t squared minus 42t plus 30. All right, well, let's see. I guess I noticed there's a 3 that goes into all of these. So this is equivalent to saying 0 is equal to 3t squared minus 14t plus 10. OK, so I did a little divide by 3 action. OK, so uh, let's see. Can we factor this, right? That's a good question. And I guess the answer is probably not uh, just fiddling around with it. Uh, in my mind. So why don't we just use the quadratic formula? So this is going to happen if and only if t equals, let's see, uh, minus b, so 14 plus or minus the square root 14 squared, which is 196, uh, minus 4 times 3 times 10, so minus 120 over 2 times 3 is 6. So we can simplify this slightly. 14 plus or minus the uh, square root of 76 over 6. OK, uh, let's see, 76 is 4 by 19. So I can rewrite this as 14 plus or minus 2 root 19 over 6. And I guess we can kill a 2. So 7 plus or minus root 19 over 3. And yeah, definitely, I'm not expecting <laughs> this to have factored now. Uh, OK, now let's make sure that actually both of these roots are going to occur after t is greater than or equal to 0. So the square root of 19 is a little bit bigger than 4, right? So it's actually bigger than 4, less than 5, because 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16. So uh, you're looking at something around 7 minus a little something bigger than 4 divided by 3, or 7 plus something a little bit bigger than 4 divided by 3. Both cases, these are positive. All right, so those will be the two places where the particle is at rest. So let's make our answer clear here. So particle is at rest when t is equal to 7 plus, well, let's do the minus first, 7 minus root 19 over 3, and at t equals 7 plus root 19 over 3. Okay, moving on. When is the particle moving to the right? Okay, so since we're moving along the x-axis, the particle is going to be moving to the right when the velocity is positive. Okay, so if you increase, uh, if, if v is positive, that means that the position is increasing. That means that the x-coordinate is increasing. So for c, for the right section, OK, so when is it moving to the right? So moving right 
when the velocity is positive. Okay, so let's draw a little sine graph for the velocity function. So uh, I don't really want to keep writing the 7 minus root 19 over 3 and all that jazz. So uh, let me just give a, a shorthand name for it. Let me call this one A and this one B. So A is going to be somewhere over here and B will be somewhere over here. And I know that the velocity at A is 0, right? That's when the particle is at rest. So the velocity is 0 at these points. Okay, uh, now the velocity function was a parabola. So, and because there's a 9 at the beginning, I know that this is an upward facing parabola. So it's got to look something like this. Ah, so that tells me that the velocity is going to be positive before I get to A, so in this domain, and after I leave B. So I am moving right. So IE when T is less than A and when T is greater than B. Okay, and so then how about when I'm going to be moving to the left? Well, this should be, I guess, reasonably clear at this point. I'm moving left when the velocity is negative. And the velocity is going to be negative, you can see in the graph, in between A and B. Okay, so this is when the velocity is below the axis. So IE when T is greater than A and T is less than B. Okay, how about we try D now? What is the displacement of the particle between 0 and 4 seconds? So the displacement is the total distance that the particle has moved, not, not in terms of a, like, okay, let's say I, I walk over here and I walk five steps and then I walk back five steps. In this case, I've walked a total of 10 steps, okay? However, because I ended up where I started, my displacement is actually zero, okay? So I wanna know the actual change in my position, okay? So that's what this means here, change in position. Well, the position function was given by s of t. So if I want to know the change between s of 0 and s of 4, I can just compute s of 4 minus s of 0. All right, well, I can plug 4 into this, and let's see, 4 cubed is 64 by 3 is 192 uh, minus, let's see, 4 squared is 16, oh my goodness, 16 by 21 is uh, 336, uh, plus 30 by 4, that's 120. Okay, so this is the S of 4. Minus S of 0, well actually that's really great. If I plug 0 in for T, I just get 0. So, uh, so this is all minus 0. And now this is just a little bit of arithmetic here. Uh, let's see. Uh, 200, 312 to the right, and then minus 336, so minus 24. Okay, so they haven't given us uh, units here, so I can't tell you what the, you know, the negative 24 meters or whatever, but this will be the total displacement. Okay, final question. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down? So what does that mean? Well, speed has something to do with velocity. Velocity, in fact, is the, uh, the speed, but in a direction, right? So the speed is actually the velocity without reference to a direction, okay? It's just the, the absolute value, if you like, of the velocity in this case. So uh, let's take a look at this velocity. At the very beginning, right, be, it, it actually a very high velocity, it seems like. Uh, and then it's going down, okay? And it's going down, and when you get to A, the velocity is actually zero, which means that the speed is zero. And then the velocity gets negative, but now what does it mean that the velocity is negative? That actually means that it's just going to the left. Uh, but it's still going actually a little bit faster, right? In fact, what we could do is we could take the absolute value between A and B here, and that would actually tell us the speed. 
Okay. So here we'll do a little highlighting here. So this would actually give us the speed curve. All right. So the speed is fine here and it gets to zero, it stops, and now it starts speeding up again but going in the opposite direction. But then you can see it actually starts slowing down again, and when you get to B, the velocity is zero, so the speed is zero. And then once you get to B, it starts speeding up again. So is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Well, it depends on what domain you're referring to. So what we could say is between Well, let's see, it's slowing down until you get to A, so between um, uh, zero and A, the particle is slowing down. Okay, now what's happening? At A, it starts speeding up, and it speeds up until we get to, well, the halfway point. Okay, so this is the average of A and B. All right, so uh, between A and A plus B over 2, the particle is speeding up. Okay, then it starts slowing down again, and it slows down until we get to B. So between A plus B over 2 and B, the particle is slowing down. And now once you leave B, now it's going to be speeding up forever. So after B, the particle is speeding up. All right. So there we go. That's how we uh, we can decide whether a particle is speeding up or slowing down, at least uh, if we're using the, the physics definition of speed, which is uh, essentially the absolute value of the velocity. All right, I hope uh, this is helpful uh, for you. I'll mark this, that's E. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments.